I was a pretty rebellious kid, you know, teenager especially. But no matter what I did, no matter where I went, we always had to go to church. Sunday was this all day church, church, church. But that grew me. Uh, it helped me um, to know about the Bible. It helped me to know the wonderful stories. It come to help me to know God in a very real and personal way. One of my favorite biblical characters, as I'm sure uh, for many of my Jewish brothers and sisters, is Moses. And uh, my church hears me tell stories about Moses all the time. I was tired of just your traditional church and doing things as usual. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something cutting edge. So we started New Beginnings Church and it's been a blessing to our, our neighborhood. And out of New Beginnings Church, we said, okay, we need to have a missions arm of our church. So we started Project Hood. Hood stands for Helping Others Obtain Destiny. And our focus is on um, poverty and violence and it gives us a wonderful opportunity to come alongside people and to help them change the trajectory of their lives. We were called the number one neighborhood for violence in all of the city of Chicago at that time. And I wanted to bring awareness to it because I felt enough people weren't talking about it. At the same time, this motel was across the street that was really causing a lot of issues for our community. It was a, a haven for drug dealers and prostitution. And I wanted to buy it and, and get rid of it. So. I went up on the top of the roof of that motel and I said, I'm not gonna come down until the story is told all across America about what's going on about the violence and until I raise enough money to purchase the motel and tear it down. It was 94 days of staying on that roof and the world began to know about the violence in the south side of Chicago and we raised enough money to purchase that motel and tear it down and that's exactly where we're gonna build our 90,000 square foot economic opportunity center now. It's a wonderful story and uh, even I can't believe it. <laughs> My message to both communities, the Black and the Jewish community, is build relationships. I think so many times and so often we allow our differences to separate us, but our differences should not separate us. Our differences should help us to celebrate one another. And I'm happy and thankful to be a part of Stand With Us. And specifically, we were trying to do something for babies and Peggy brought her and her friends with lots of gifts for all of these children and pampers and things of that sort. And we were so appreciative. Little did we know then what we know now that a, a great relationship would be forged. We've had the, the Passover event, which was really amazing where we were able to share musically and theologically all of our views and experiences, which was an amazing event. It, it's been a lot and it's been a, a blessing. I would love to be able to take some entrepreneurs and people to Israel to see people who have risen out of nothing and created such a beautiful nation would change the dynamics of our community drastically. I'm happy and thankful to be a part of Stand With Us and it's been an amazing journey and it's been a journey that I'm grateful for. You raise me up so I can't stand on mountains You raise me up to walk on stormy sea I am strong <sighs> Pastor Brooks, you and I met during adversity, during the COVID pandemic and there were some destruction and riots and we called and spoke to each other, what do you need? And the first time I met you, I knew that I met a leader who could make things happen. Uh, and a person, and I watched your leadership style and I thought, this is a man I could study at his feet. On your desk, you had a copy of the Startup Nation, book about, he didn't know I was doing anything about Israel, he just had that book on his desk. And I asked you why you have that book, and you said, because you want a black startup nation. Yeah. Giving people, <laughs> giving people opportunity, opportunity to grow and thrive. And I knew you were the man to do it. But you're not only focused with a relentless determination. I, 
This man was on the roof in Chicago, and he stayed on the roof for almost a year without going down. Um, and you want to replace violence with opportunity, but you are a true and courageous friend. You stand up against anti-Semitism, sometimes in difficult situations, to form meaningful relationships and partnerships with the Jewish community and stand with us. For these reasons, and so many more, I'm honored to honor you. I'll get closer to you. Pastor Corey Brooks, a courageous leader who inspires us to stand together in the belief that what unites us is far greater than what divides us. October 29th, 2023. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, tonight, I'm proud to say <clears throat> that I stand with Israel. And yes. and that my heart goes out to Israel as well because we know that pain, the pain of having children who lose their lives too soon, the pain of losing children at the hands of violent individuals who could care less about the future we know that pain so well. Over the last 30 years in Chicago, I've done over 200 funerals of young people under the age of 18 who have been shot and killed. We know that pain so well. One of those individuals was a young man by the name of Carlton Archer who was 16 years old who was shot and killed. His parents were members of our congregation and they did not want to have the funeral at our church because they were afraid of what would happen. Somehow I convinced his mother and father to go ahead and have the funeral at our church. And just as they said, as the children from four blocks away were walking into our neighborhood, one set of kids from another gang walking into another gang territory where our church was, gunfire broke out and my heart sank because I realized the pain and the trauma that this mother had already experienced was even going to be magnified. I never will forget we were able to get things calm and we debated on whether we should have the funeral or not, but we decided to go ahead and have it anyway. Police were everywhere, all around the building. And at the end of that funeral, something happened to me that had never happened before. I felt this prompting, this urging to tell the young men there that had brought guns illegally into the church that they need to turn those guns in. And if anyone would turn those guns in, that they would not experience any criminal charges. And I said a prayer, and with faith and boldness, I believe that people were gonna just run down and throw all guns at the altar at the front of the church. But it didn't happen, it was silent, it was quiet. No one said a word at the end of the prayer. Then all of a sudden, a young man with locks and a t-shirt and baggy jeans pulls up his shirt and in the band of his pants, he pulls out a nine millimeter Glock. Another individual pulls out another gun. Another individual pulls out another gun. At the end of the funeral, the sergeant of police came up to me. They had found a fourth gun, a nine millimeter with an extended clip underneath one of the seats. And right then I made a vow to God, God, whatever you want me to do in this neighborhood to bring about transformation, I'm all in. Little did I know I would walk about 100 feet outside of our church and there it was across the street from our church, a motel that was the centerpiece of gun violence, the centerpiece of drug dealing, the centerpiece of prostitution and something had to be done. I decided to go up on the roof of that motel and I determined that I was not going to come down until everyone in America and around the world was made aware of the violence, 
that was going on on the south side of Chicago. I ended up staying there 94 days. And while I was there, I wrote these things called Rooftop Revelations, trying to figure out all the ways that we could better our community. We started a non-for-profit while I was on the roof called Project Hood. Hood stands for Helping Others Obtain Destiny. And we decided we're going to focus on education, economics, social, spiritual ills, health and wellness in order to turn our community around because in 2014, the Chicago Sun-Times called our neighborhood the most dangerous block in all of Chicago, O Block. O because it was named after a young man named O.D. Perry who was shot and killed and the gangs picked up the O in his name and started calling it O Block. Well, we decided we wanted to do something. We wanted transformation. However, we liked the O. We just wanted to change what it was stood for. So we changed it to Opportunity Block. And ever since that time, We've been making things better for individuals in our neighborhood, trying to bring about change, trying to change things around, so much so that 10 years after that first rooftop experience, I went back up on the roof. Because after we purchased the motel the first time and cleared the area, we said we wanted to have a center, a leadership and economic center, where we could build a black startup nation where we give our, our children an opportunity to learn and to grow, where we could build collaborations with groups like Stand With Us that would come into our community and help us to be everything that God designs for us to be. And I went back up on the roof and I stayed there for 343 days, all in an attempt to build a leadership and economic center, 90,000 square feet, $35 million, and you know in Chicago, when you bring in the unions, it's now $40 million. <laughs> and we said we want to build it for free. We want to build it debt free. And we've been working very hard, and over the last two years, since I was on that roof, we raised $30 million. And a lot of that is in response to the cheering on, the encouraging, and the collaboration of Stand With Us. Understanding that you can't do it on an island by yourself. That partnerships and relationships are so vital and so important if you're ever going to accomplish anything in this world. I learned a long time ago that God did not put me on the earth all by myself, so therefore, I need to partner and collaborate with individuals who are like-minded. I'm so grateful for the relationship with Stand With Us. I'm so grateful that when we needed pampers and, and milk in our neighborhood to have the world's largest baby shower, <laughs> to help single mothers who were trying to get a good start Stand With Us was right there. I'm so grateful that at every turn when we've looked for partners to help us to transform our community, Stand With Us has been right there. So we want you to know that not only do you stand with us, but we also stand with you. We may all be from different places. We may have different ethnicities and religions and viewpoints. But all of us are God's children. And the world will be such a better place when we learn how to live in peace. So as we pray for Israel on the south side of Chicago, I go back home on the south side of Chicago tonight asking you to pray for us as well. Pray for us that young kids can walk to the stores without being shot and killed. Pray for us that the reading levels in our neighborhood will rise. 
4% reading proficiency, 6% math proficiency in our community. Pray for us. The young black boys will stop killing young black boys. Pray for us that life will be different and that peace will come. I tell people, I may not see you on this side of heaven again, but I thank God that one of these old days, when all of God's children get together in heaven, what a time, what a time, what a time we shall have. But until that time, let's practice peace, goodwill, love toward one another. God bless you. God keep you. And please don't forget, as you pray for Israel, pray for the south side of Chicago.